Thank you for joining us today. The webinar uh, on the membership training and membership recruitment and retention training webinar. I am Mary Cruz. I am the Vice President here at SMPS headquarters. At SMPS, we understand, we do understand the level of commitment and um, our chapter volunteers make every day. Because of this, our society is strong and our members know they are a part of a remarkable network of marketing and business development professionals. The staff, the board of directors, we deeply appreciate your service to the chapter and, and the society. Thank you for joining us today. I also want to introduce you to the membership team here at SMPS headquarters. Please use us, call on us at any time. We're, we're, answer to ha we're happy to answer any questions you have and support you. Our team is Natalie Gossard, Chapter Services Manager, Franco Holmes, Membership Coordinator, Denise Shankin is the Assistant Controller. Why grow membership? Great question. We need to think about advancing the profession. There's many, many reasons to think about growing membership, but we have to first think about why we're here. We're here to advance the profession. SMPS exists to advance the profession of professional services marketing, to be an advocate for you in your profession and in your career. We know the importance of the profession and for you to be valued and validated. So to build awareness of our profession. And doing that, growth is essential. It's essential to the society and to the chapter. When, when we grow our members, we grow the number of members that we have, we grow the collective knowledge and we grow, grow the wisdom. The wisdom is gained. We have more members. We have a larger pool of volunteers. We have a larger pool of knowledge to draw from and opportunities to connect. And in doing this and growing your chapter, your chapter is sustainable and the society. So that said, we know your role as membership chair or membership committee member is critical. A smart chapter understands. You understand the critical role of membership and re uh, recruitment and retention. You understand how critical it is and the role it plays in the overall success. Remember that your chapter was developed because there was a need to provide professional services marketers quality local education programs and a forum to network and learn. To serve these needs well, it is imperative to build, keep, and strengthen your membership base. So what is your role? Nally Gossard will share the details now to help you understand specific responsibilities of your role. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here today. So just what is your role as membership chair and or committee member for your chapter? First, very, very important to ensure your chapter has developed a job description for your membership team and for potential volunteers. Please do not assume that your committee members and volunteers know and or have an understanding of the work to be done on your committee. So provide the details and clear expectations within a job description. So here up on the screen you'll see we've provided you with a great sample of a job description. Other job description samples. Um, that have been provided to us by chapters are saved within the library of the All Chapter Leaders community of My SMPS. A great job description for your membership team for your chapter would include the following, for example, attendance at all monthly board meetings, drafting budget and conceptual plans of membership initiatives for the year, coordinating contact with members and prospects, organizing new member orientation and onboarding touches, Tracking membership activity, that includes new, renewing, expiring members, members who are about to drop, etc. Conducting member and non-member surveys, coordinating member recruitment efforts, outreach, coordinating member retention efforts and outreach, organizing annual membership drives, just some great examples. So again, we've provided an example for you to use here. So please feel free to make it your own based on the needs of your chapter. And by all means, then share it with um, your, your current team and our potential committee member volunteers so they are very clear and they have a great understanding of all expectations. Next, your role is to develop or recruit committee volunteers. How? How to do this? Well, here are five solid ideas. First, you want to develop a volunteer survey to gauge interest and availability of potential committee members. 
Now, SNPS headquarters has an account with SurveyMonkey that you can use to create surveys. And many surveys already exist within our account that you can copy and repurpose for your needs. Two, we really encourage you to use the direct ask approach. Specifically, ask potential volunteers to serve on your committee, especially once you've gotten to know a little bit about them and, and you feel as if they'd be a good job. They'd do a good job. They'd be a good fit. Many chapters find this really effective rather than making a general announcement asking for volunteers at the beginning of meetings. So remember that, and also remember that no doesn't mean never. Okay? If the volunteer says, no, not interested, perhaps keep notes on this volunteer. You know that they have other interests where, they might, where you might be able to plug them in or what might be interesting to them based on what's been shared with you and then revisit this at a later time. So remember, no doesn't always mean never. Number three, set clear tasks and expectations and do this by providing a really great job description like we just discussed. Number four, invite potential volunteers to a board meeting. Have you ever thought about doing this? Have them sit in on a meeting to glean just what really goes on during a meeting, how fun it is, <laughs> or really what's accomplished and, and how everything is done within your board meeting. And lastly, it's very important to know the tools that are available to you and your team. And we're going to do a deeper dive on the resources and tools that are available to you from headquarters um, within this presentation in just a bit. Your last role as a membership team member, for, as, um, pardon me, your last role as a membership team for your chapter is to really know your numbers. Know your numbers. What does that mean? Well, it means exactly that. Know the numbers associated with your chapter, the growth rate, the retention rate, the current roster number, the demographics, et cetera. Know your numbers. It's really difficult to know where to focus your efforts if you don't know or understand how many members have joined, dropped, or renewed in a given time period. The All Chapter Leaders community of my SMPS is really chock full of resources for you. It contains current and historical chapter statistics and demographics for your review. Please do check that out. The Extranet is available to you. It's a site where you can pull chapter reports 24-7 live in real time. It contains real data, live data, on your chapter roster, new and transferred members, expiring members, prospects, former members, etc. Now all presidents, presidents elects, and membership chairs are assigned access to the extranet. And access can then be provided to two additional team members. So please contact us for more information on the extranet or to have us provide an additional access to one of your team members. Chapter statistical reports on membership are pushed out monthly to all chairs, and these are saved within my SMPS. Additionally, membership chairs receive daily push alerts when a new member joins and monthly alerts when members are set to expire. So please use this important information to reach out and greet new chapter members and contact expiring members um, to encourage them to continue their membership. And all important calculations, retention and growth are available to you. And upon your request, if you need them, if you're not keeping them internally, I'm happy to assist you with those. So please reach out to us for assistance and know your numbers. Thank you, Natalie. We're going to move on now to remember recruitment. So remember, recruitment strategy, it's, it's important before you dive in and you, and you start thinking about prospecting and who are your prospect members and, and bringing in those new members. We, should sit down with your team, sit down with your board of directors, and think about, think carefully about the members you want to recruit, and about your core base. Who are your core members, and what are, what are the gaps that maybe the segments you need to fill to make a, 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 diver, a more diverse membership? What is that gap that maybe um, you have a lots of entry level, mid level uh, type volunteers, but maybe not that many business developers or senior principals and owners or technical or sellers. What is that group that you want to bring into your chapter to, to bring that wisdom, to bring the knowledge? Decide on membership goals, your target number. Have a specific goal in mind. What is it that, how many do you want to bring in for the given year? What is that percentage of growth you want to reach that's realistic for your chapter? Align that with your chapter strategic plan. 
Identify sources and sectors where you, are, uh, where you can find those potential members. What are those sources in your local area, your communities, that uh, you can reach out to? And we'll talk about a little bit more of those in just a moment. Your committee members must know and understand the society and its value. So being able to, in a, in a room when you're at a program or at an event that you may have non-members at, or if you're just having coffee with an interested um, individual, someone that might be interested in membership, know the value of membership. Be able to talk to those selling those talking points. Uh, we will provide you with that. There are value propositions um, when you're talking to a firm owner, when you're talking to um, a member in general. We have all of that information in the membership uh, section of the chapter manual. The first several pages gives uh, elevator speeches and, and value talking points. So make sure to um, check that out. And we'll talk about that as well. And we'll be um, sharing that with you following the webinar. A membership system must be in place. Make sure you have um, whatever system that works for your chapter if, you know, in retaining and, and keeping good records of these prospects that are coming to your events, the non-members that are showing interest. You will also receive prospect information from headquarters through the extranet. All of the different sources that you're going to be collecting um, potential members from. It could just be from your existing members. They have a name of someone within their firm that could benefit or a firm that's not a member. Make sure you have a system in place that's clean to collect this data so that you can reach out to them. And you know, we know over years it tends to build up. You tend to have, um, could have a, a very large list. Well, go back and refresh that list every year. Take a look at it and make sure it's still realistic and, and viable. And for those that are, you know, came to an event five or six years ago, it's probably time to remove them from the list. Decide on the best method and time of year for your recruitment. Are there other industry events going on? Look at the industry calendar and also align yourself with headquarters. What are we working on? Um, do we have a contest in place? Align your efforts along uh, with ours. And again, our contest will be kicked off this year um, in uh, March 1st. Develop realistic action plan and a budget. Make sure you work with your board of directors. You have a, a line item uh, if for budget items. Prospects. So let's talk a little bit about prospects. Keep a prospective member list um, at all times. We spoke briefly about that. And conduct regular outreach campaigns to them. We will help you with this as well. Share your prospect list with headquarters. Uh, Franco Holmes will be reaching out, our membership coordinator here at SPS headquarters, will be sending an email in a, uh, within a week or so to all membership chairs requesting your prospect list. He's going to give you a sample template for the information we're looking for. And what we will do with that is we're going to be looking at the information. We'll qualify those individuals. We do a little bit of a deeper dive in finding out who these um, prospects are. Then we will, before reaching out, we will think about the targeted message that we want to send to these prospects. Um, along with the chapter, when we put together the letter to go in the welcome packet or the prospect packet um, of materials, we will think about, is this um, an entry level, level person? And if so, what are those special value added items or from the chapter level, from, from national, that we can provide? What is the value that will appeal to them? And so we are doing more targeted prospecting, not just blanketed prospecting. And we will mail that information out on behalf of the chapter. So work with us on that and share your information. Here's a list of potential prospect sources that you can draw from. Existing members are probably one of the best to draw from. We have a referral campaign that we're going to talk about. It's been ongoing um, for, for many years now. If a member brings in a member um, in a given year, you receive three months of an extension on your membership. And if you bring in a second member, you receive um, an American Express gift card. So we have a fun way to recognize, and, and you'll also be recognized in our newsletter, uh, Marketer Quick Look, our e-news that goes out. So our existing members know there, there's probably more individuals in their department that should join or other firms uh, that aren't aware of SMPS. Talk to your existing members about recruitment. SMPS headquarters is always uh, recruiting and, 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 and um, managing prospects within our own database. Those I, um, names are shared within the extranet on the prospect report. So when we're at industry events, uh, we will 
bring those into our database, and then based on chapter and zip code, they will be affiliated with your chapter. Also, event rosters, non-members that are coming to your programs and that continue to come, repeat non-members. Find out why they're not joining. What is the holdback? Have conversations with those individuals. Of course, there's always uh, business journals and other AEC um, industry association lists. So here are a few ideas on recruiting members. Again, know the value and feature of membership. It's incredibly, incredibly important when you're having conversations, when you're just in a room with someone and, and you're, you're maybe a buddy or an ambassador um, to this individual. You want to be able to know their needs and talk to the features and benefits of membership. And before an event, if you're about to have a, um, um, a program with your chapter or a holiday social, have a moment before the event kicks off to just talk about the value of membership. It doesn't have to be a lengthy discussion. Maybe you just pick one value, like our free lunchtime learning labs that SNPS headquarters offers every, every month. So, and those are archived in our Marketing Resource Center, which has thousands of, of resources for you. And then the chapter, of course, has benefits. You can talk to that as well. But highlight them, talk about them, maybe have a new member come up and share their story. They can give member testimonials. You may want to ask your, your brand new members for information. Ask your current members why they joined. Take those answers and turn them into a clear stated value proposition for your chapter. Membership drives are always a good idea. Again, coming up with a clear plan and a, and a drive and, and make it fun. We know our members enjoy that. We, we always have a good time, and we're very excited about our upcoming contest as well. The SMPS referral campaign, again, that's ongoing. There's uh, flyers on the headquarters website, and we send that out to um, the chapters as well. So make sure you share that information. Have a link to it on your chapter's website so they're familiar with the program. And then make uh, recruiting personal. There are so many, uh, chapters are doing so many wonderful things out there, and um, there are several chapters I know that have programs in place that apply that personal touch. What is that? Is it taking someone to coffee? You know, you're paired up, maybe your board members are paired up with a couple of non-members that are coming to programs, and every other month you take the, that two, small group, two or three individuals to, to coffee, and you align yourself with them. You learn what their needs are, um, and, and just getting to know them. We know that the number one reason members join a society, specifically SMPS, is for that network, for the relationships, for the camaraderie, for the friendships, and um, also, of course, the learning and all of the resources. But getting to know you and that personal touch is very important. Once they've become a member, welcoming the new member, the onboarding process is so important. And here are a few ideas about onboarding and welcoming new members, making them feel special the minute uh, they join. Of course, from headquarters, as soon as someone joins, they get a welcome message from us, and we are um, always um, have touch points from here. But from the chapter level, the, the um, membership chairs are alerted. We have push alerts. As soon as an e uh, someone joins, that membership chair should receive an email the next morning by 10 a.m. saying, you just had um, Mary Cruz just joined your chapter. Here's her information. You should have an email that's just a, a general welcome email that you can send out immediately. And of course, you can personalize that, a welcome email or even a phone call. We know that you know chapters on average have about anywhere the maximum typically, unless it's in a drive period, in a membership contest period, is, is about five to six members a month. So it's manageable to say in a given month you can make those five phone calls or share that with your board and your committee and tag team that. A new member orientation. Many of our chapters uh, conduct great new member orientations. It's an opportunity to share what's going on at the chapter, the new initiatives coming down from the society, all of the value. You can even, um, we a lot of times from headquarters will virtually uh, tap into the meeting um, via GoToMeeting and we'll conduct a webinar, a brief portion of the session on my SMPS or we'll talk about another value. So keep that in mind. And at the new member orientation, you can also talk about engagement, how important it is to get engaged early on in the volunteer opportunities. Something fun, create a new member's coffee group just for your new members. Coordinate that for them. Bring them together. Or tw uh, tweet chat. Tweet chat's always fun. And um, it's an opportunity, again, from their desk. Uh, they don't have to come out. They can just connect uh, via social media on a tweet chat and share what's going on um, in their firms. Or do they have a question that uh, they need support on? It's having that uh, lifeline is so important to our members. Engage new members 
call them to volunteer as soon as they join. Give them a little time to get uh, the ground, get on the ground. But you know, you really want to start uh, mentoring them and encouraging them to participate, even if it's just working the registration um, desk at an event or shaking hands and welcoming the the keynote speaker. Give them opportunities to volunteer. Recognize new members at functions. We all like to be recognized in different ways on your website, e-news, through social media, and invite them to share at events. Why, why did they become a member? And another idea is assign new members a buddy. Help them to get to know the ropes and, and meet other members. You can do even when they come to an event, have a special tag just for them so that your board members and other members know how to recognize new members at events. I'm sure there's many more ideas out there. You may have tried these, and, and certainly share your ideas. If you have outstanding um, onboarding practices, please share those with us. You can email myself or any of our team members, and we'll be happy to share that with all uh, chapter volunteers. We're moving on to member retention. Retention stats. I just want to go over quickly. Our current uh, retention rate is 83%. That's been our average this year. And um, comparatively to other professional service associations, um, average between 78 and 79%, we are above the curve. And um, we do know that the one to two year member, that first, second year member, are 48% of our drops. So um, last year in 2014-15, 48% of our drops were the, the new members, that one to two year members. So we know how critical it is in that early stage to really engage them and make them aware of all of the resources um, at the onset. Know your members. Understand who they are. In retaining members, you have to. Our membership is so transient, and it's always changing. Um, that may not be the story for your chapter. Your chapter may have always have the same demographic, but maybe there's that group that you can start reaching out to. But know your members. Understand the demographics. We provide reports um, regularly to you on on that, and it's a quick overview of job function, firm discipline. Um, Review and share these with your board so everybody, and especially with the programs committee and those working on programs, so that you're finding new ways. If you find, um, you know, our membership is ever changing and, you know, generational differences are, are very apparent. We have millennials. Do they want to learn? Are they joining our association for the same reasons that um, many of our current members joined? Do they find the same value? Is it more about friendships and camaraderie than it is about education? How do they want to learn? Make it fun. Communicate differently with them. So it's, it's, it's very important to know that. And we're working on that here at headquarters as well. Survey members and non-members. Learn and respond to their interests and needs. We have, you know, you don't have to recreate the wheel. Go to SurveyMonkey, and we'll, Nellie's going to talk on our um, resources and our uh, tools in a, in a moment, but know that we have a SurveyMonkey account. It's an SNPS account. We'll provide you with the login information, and there are hundreds of, re of uh, surveys there that chapters have created, headquarters has created, so you literally just take one that makes sense for your chapter, update it so it has your chapter's name on it, and get that out to your members. And we're happy to help you uh, with questions if, if, if you have any. Um, but make sure you're also surveying your non-members. They're coming to your programs. Find out why they're not joining. And conduct small target, targeted focus group sessions. Those can be fun. You know, you invite your members, get a mix of members and non-members. Maybe after a session, ask them to stay for an additional 30 minutes and have questions prepared have a board member sitting at each round table and, and make sure you capture that information. What is it? You know, take every, seize every opportunity outside of surveys and the typical um, reports. You can do these and conduct small targeted focus groups. They don't have to be, it doesn't have to be a laborious process. It's something that you can do um, before or after a program that you have. A couple ideas on retaining members. Mentor programs. Many of the chapters have a mentor program at the onset. I know Washington, D.C. is one that um, has had guru guidance in place for many years. As soon as a member joins, they know that they're automatically a part of this uh, guru guidance program. They have a, a meeting once a month, and the, boards are, the board members are there. They invite some um, seasoned members to participate, and they pair them up. And um, so right at the onset, they have someone they can turn to, someone they can, can you know, um, ask for advice or just learn the ropes of, of being a member. We know, um, keep, you know, keep new members active and, and involved. 
Greater level of engagement creates understanding and value. Real value equates to greater rates of renewal. We know this. So again, getting those new members involved and engaged immediately. Offerings that appeal to members. Again, knowing your membership, making sure that you're providing programs, learning opportunities, networking events, and you're communicating with your members in a way that appeals to them. Offer member-only events so that you know there is extra value there. Recognize them, personal outreach, a call list. I can't tell you from here in headquarters, we reach out to our members in a phone call. Franco Homes in particular is calling um, all of our members before they approach their rec um, expiration date. We want to know how you know how is your membership going? Tell us about that. Um, and and are you thinking about renewing? And we we have a conversation with them. And I can't tell you how um, what great feedback uh, and results I should say we get from those personal outreach and, and calls. Involve members in recruitment. Offer incentives to members to recruit new members. We have our own uh, referral campaign and other fun contests, but suggest a free registration to a program or um, recognize them in a special way in a newsletter or at a program. Get your members involved in recruitment as well. I'm going to turn it back over to Natalie Gossert. She's going to talk to you about the resources that are available for you. Thanks, Mary. So earlier in the program, I mentioned the importance of understanding and sharing the resources with your membership team. So let's take a look at the list of great resources that are available to you. Now, if I can recommend only one slide from this presentation for you that would really be advantageous to print it, keep it, and share it with your team, this slide would be it. Membership resources and tools. So we've already rolled through several of these, and now I'd like to touch on, I think there's four that we haven't shared with you yet today. So first, you have the Membership Chapter Manual, and this is available within the All Chapter Leaders community. The manual is extremely useful. It's a how-to guide, how to conduct your membership program. We're sending a copy along with the recording of this program to you today. And again, this membership manual is a great tool, guidebook, how-to. It really should be the go-to with any questions that you may have with how to conduct your membership program. Details the, how, the hows, the whys, the whats, everything for your membership committee. Next, the Striving for Excellence and Chapter President of the Year submittals, SFD and CPY, they are excellent resources for your chapter as they showcase what effective methods that successful chapters have in place. So review these submittals. Copy their ideas for your membership. You don't have to recreate the wheel. If you're looking, for example, on how to start a mentorship program, well, many of the submittals showcase how it's done, how they've done it effectively. It's very helpful. And many chapters do use the awards criteria sections, SFD. One of the sections is membership. They use this section for their strategic planning each year, like a checklist. It really helps them to focus on what they're, what they're doing well and areas in which they might need some improvement. So I encourage you to check out the submittals every year. These are also stored within the All Chapter Leaders community of my SMPS. Great stuff is being done and being shared by our chapters. So please do use the membership check section as a checklist of sorts. Um, recruitment campaign offer. Are you aware that headquarters, once a year, we will support your chapter's recruitment efforts by doing one of the following things. We'll reimburse a chapter for recruitment mailing costs. We'll design a postcard and we'll print and mail this postcard if needed. We'll print and mail a postcard that you have designed. Or we'll schedule a one-day telemarketing campaign to prospects within your chapter. So have you taken advantage of this assistance yet this year? Please do so. We're more than happy to assist you. And there is a presentation available entitled Power of My SMPS that details the benefits and advantages of membership. And so this is extremely useful to share. You can use it perhaps at a recruiting event or to share with your team, highlighting the advantages and benefits of SMPS. And please contact us. That is available. We can send that out to you. It's also available within the All Chapter Leaders community of my SMPS. So a lot of great resources, tools. We have ideas that we can share with you. Chapters are sharing great ideas with us, and we are happy to share them with you. So we're here to support you in your membership efforts. 
Um, we are your headquarters membership team, and we're always happy to advise and assist, so please do reach out to us. And thank you for all you are all doing to advance your chapter and the society. Thank you, Natalie. So we've shared uh, quite a bit of detail on um, that more top-level thinking about strategy, implementation, fun ideas to get there. Um, you know, with uh, our, our annual contest, we will be able to share um, information on, on all those great ideas that chapters are sharing. So we'll send those out. And as Natalie said, the Striving for Excellence uh, program is a great way uh, to do that. So with that, one moment. I also want to thank you. Um, the strength of SNPS over the past years, we know, is a direct result of volunteers like you who have given their time and talent to help us accomplish goals above and beyond our established uh, work of our program. So uh, for that, we, we are tremendously grateful, and we thank you for that. <laughs>